Hey, everyone welcome to the 11 The Lesson of the Crow Panel SP32 HMI Display Series Tutorial. In this session, I'll show you how to utilize the Wi-Fi functionality of Crow Panel to communicate with an s 1266. The Wi-Fi function of SP32 and SP8266 chips has two modes, a P mode and ST a mode. In a P mode, the SP32 serves as an access point, allowing other Wi-Fi devices to connect and communicate. In STI mode, the SP32 acts as a client, needing to connect to an access point before initiating communication. Of course, if your project has specific requirements, you can have both a P and ST modes coexist. For this lesson, I'll be using both modes along with the S8266. First, we'll set the Crow Panel SP32 HMI5 in board in a P mode, serving as a server. Then we'll configure the SP8266 in ST mode, acting as a client connecting to the Wi-Fi created by the Crow Panel and initiating a connection to the specified port of the Crow Panel for data transmission and reception. When you slide the slider on the Crow Panel screen, it will send data to SP8266 via Wi-Fi. Once SP8266 receives the data, it will control the servo motor to rotate to the corresponding angle. That's the whole process. Additionally, if you have two Crow Panel boards, you can replace SP8266 with Crow Panel, which can also be set to ST a mode. Now let's see how to achieve this together. Open the course code folder and find the two codes for the 11 the lesson. Let's start with the code for the Crow Panel. Inside the Crow Panel folder, you'll see the UI file that I designed and exported from Squareline Studio. In the UI, I only added two widgets, a slider, which when moved will change its value and send that value to the client and a label that displays the current slider value. Because it's quite simple, we'll skip the UI design part in this lesson. If you're not sure how to use Squareline Studio, please review the content from the sixth lesson first. All right, let's open the code using the Arduino IDE. Since the compilation speed of the new IDE is too slow, I'd like to use the older version of the IDA for this lesson. After opening the code, you'll see that it includes an additional Wi-Fi header file compared to previous lessons. The Wi-Fi library is a key component for this lesson, but fortunately, you don't have to install it manually, as it's already part of the SP32 package. Following that, you'll find the UI header file and the header file for configuring the screen driver interface. Since I'm using a 5 in board for this lesson, there's no need for any changes in this regard. Next, returning to the Eno file, here's the name of the Wi-Fi I want to connect to and its password. This is the IP address I've set for the Crow panel. Since the client needs to specify the IP address in the code to connect to it, and the code cannot be changed after uploading to the board, it's necessary to have a fixed IP address when creating the access point in Crow Panel. Below here is the port that the server will monitor. Then at the end of the setup function, after the UI loading function has run, I first set the Crow Panel to a P mode, then assign the fixed IP address as well as the Wi-Fi name and password. Finally, I enable the Wi-Fi functionality. In the loop function, I first use the available function of the Wi-Fi server to check if there are any clients connected. For introductions to the functions in the Wi-Fi library, you can find the Arduino provided page on search engines. Here you can find all the functions and descriptions of the Wi-Fi library, which will help you understand and use this library. When a client connects, it will continuously assess the status of the client to ensure if the connection remains active. Due to the usage of while, it is necessary to copy the LVGL's task handling function here to ensure periodic execution, otherwise, LVGL will crash. Then it checks a flag named slider change. If the flag is set to one, it reads the value of the slider widget and sends it to the client. Okay, 
Let's continue to look at the UI. See File. Here, you can see that the slider widget has an event added, and the trigger condition for this event is when the value of the slider changes, which is explicitly represented in the code. When this condition is met, it will update the content of a label to the current value of the slider and set a flag for the slider widget to 1. Since the declaration of this flag variable is located here, I also need to declare it as an external variable in the UI. C file. Finally, going back to the Eno file, after using the client's write function to send data, remember to reset the flag. All right. We've gone through the code for the Crow panel as the server. Now let's proceed to examine the SP8266 code as the client. Locate the SP8266 code in the course materials and open it. At the top of the code, I've included an adaptation that eliminates the need for manual configuration. It automatically includes different header files, depending on whether you're using an SP8266 board or an SP32 board. In other words, this code works for both SP8266 and SP32. Here, a servo object is created to control the rotation of the servo. Next, these are the Wi-Fi name, SSID and password for the network you need to connect to, along with the server IP address and port. In the setup function, in this instance, I'm using pin date but you'll need to modify it based on the pin you're actually using. Additionally, please note that since PWM is required to control the servo, ensure you're using a pin that supports PWM functionality. Next, set the Wi-Fi function of the SB8266 to ST mode and connect to the access point created by Crow Panel. Use a while loop to continuously attempt the connection until a successful connection is established. Once the Wi-Fi connection is established, the SB8266 and Crow Panel will be within the same local area network, LAN allowing the SB8266 to initiate a connection to a specified IP address within the LAN. The host and port to connect to would be the fixed IP address specified in the Crow Panel code and the port it is listening on. Finally, Let's take a look at the loop function. First, it checks if the server is already connected. Once connected, it uses the client. Available function to get the number of bytes that the server has written to the client. It's important to note that the usage of client, available and server, available is different. As mentioned earlier in the Crow Panel code, server. Available is used to check if there are clients connected to the server with data available for reading. It's crucial to make this distinction. When it detects that there's readable data, it uses the read by function to read it. Then it activates the servo to rotate to the received angle data. The entire implementation process is like this. Excluding the UI code, there's not much related to Wi-Fi communication, so it's not complicated. Also, if you're using SB8266 like me, you'll need to add the SB8266 board packet. Click on File, then Preferences. In the Additional Board Manager URL section, add the JSON link for the SB8266 board package and save it. I've already placed this link in the SP32 package link. Text file in the File folder just like how you added the SP32 board package in the first episode. After that, click on Tools, Find Board, and open the Boards Manager. Search for SP8266, find the latest version, and install it. Once installed, you can upload the code to the board. Connect your SP8266 board to the computer. Click on Tools, select the corresponding serial port, and finally, from the newly installed SB8266 board package, choose NodemQ 1.0. This will configure the compilation information. Now click on Upload to upload the code. All right, the SB8266 client code has been uploaded to the board. Now let's upload the Crow Panel server code to the Crow Panel board. Switch to the Crow Panel code. 
click on Tools to configure the compilation information. If you're not sure how to configure it for different boards, please review the content from the first lesson. Once configured, click on Upload to upload the code. Since the upload process can take a while, I'll skip that part of the demonstration. Once uploaded, open the serial monitor in the Arduino IDE. I'll restart the Crow panel first for a more detailed view. OK, now you can see in the serial monitor that the Crow panel has created an access point and is using 192.168.0.1 as the IP address based on my settings. It's waiting for a client connection, and you can also see that the Crow panel screen is displaying the UII design normally. Next, power on the S8266. Once it connects to the Wi-Fi created by the Crow panel, it will automatically establish a connection to the 22,333 port of the Crow panel and read the data. You can see on the serial monitor of the Arduino IDE that a client connection has been established. Now let's try sliding the slider to see if the SB8266 can control the servo motor's movement based on the received information. While sliding the slider, the ESP8266 will hand over the values received from Wi-Fi to the servo motor driver function, allowing the servo motor to rotate in sync with the slider. This has achieved the effect I anticipated. However, there is still room for improvement. I need to check through the serial port whether the server's IP address is consistent with the one I've set and whether there are any client connections. If you want to make it more comprehensive, you can add two labels to the UI of Crow Panel to display the server's IP address and the client's connection status. It must be a simple task for you, and I'm sure you can do it. That's all for this lesson. If you find this content helpful, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.